Mm-hmm. Hello. Welcome back. It's Roy and Val, and we're here to talk to you today about lamps. In particular, we're going to talk about Tiffany-style lamps. So a lot of times you hear the term Tiffany, um, and sometimes it just generically means any kind of stained glass. People say, oh, that's a Tiffany lamp. But what we're going to talk about today is really, uh, when we say Tiffany, we're going to mean it's like um, the type of lamps that Tiffany Studios made. So back in the you know early 1900s when uh, Tiffany Studios was making lamps, this is going to be very similar to it. Tiffany style. Tiffany right. style, yeah, is what people often say, right? Yeah. So, um, so you can see it's a three-dimensional form, right? So it's 360 degrees on the form. I have one that I'm kind of working on. It's made out of fiberglass, so they're really durable. I mean, you can't hardly you know, do anything to them. You can use them multiple times and without any sort of problem. We have another one here that you want to see. This is a 14-inch dragonfly, if you want to see one. I know it's hard to see, so uh, I don't know how well it shows up that Kaylee's showing you there. But, but it's embossed, like it's yeah. got the pattern in the The pattern's the, engraved yeah. into the, in, into the um, oh, yeah, embossed, mold, right? Exactly. Engraved, yes. Yeah, engraved. And then, so if you can see, like on the, the one I'm working on, some of the open spots anyway. So I darken the lines, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second, how we do that, just so uh, you sort of have an idea of where things need to go. Uh, the pattern, it comes with a pattern, um, so inside this too, I think Val's going to pull them out. But what's also nice is if you've never attempted one before, it comes with a book. I mean, there's a nice little book in there that um, tells you uh, pretty much how to do the whole process, really. Uh, but, you know, if you, uh, but we also sell a nice book, this it. one here, uh, by Hugh Archer. This is a great book. That on, is a really um, pretty book. I'm doing uh, Tiffany-style lamps, and you can see that they are... A lot, pretty of authentic beautiful, looking. Yeah, a lot of beautiful pictures. Yeah, one of the, the advantages, again, to this particular um, style is that these molds were made from actual Tiffany lamps. So the gentleman that started this, these are Odyssey, by the way, if I didn't mention that earlier, they're mm -hmm. Odyssey um, forms. Uh, he took rubbings from actual Tiffany lamps, and that's where the patterns come from. So they're about as close as you can get to a, an actual Tiffany uh, lamp. It's curled. Yeah. <laughs> it's being designed too, right? But this was the book I was telling you about. So pretty much it's an instruction manual. I'll turn around so maybe you guys can see a little bit better. I know it's all kind of curled up. But this is inside here. It's going to give you, again, all the, you know, you can see them working on. There's even some diagrams that show you how they're working on it. There's a how-to. Everything from cutting the glass to foiling to soldering is in, is in this little thing, which is nice. This is what uh, the patterns look like. So uh, for the dragonfly, which again, this is one we have here, you'll see it's only a section of the, the pattern because the patterns usually repeat. And in this case, it tells you that it repeats uh, nine times, right? So am I reading that correctly? Mm -hmm. Yes, so, good. And so, hold this down. Yeah, let me hold so, so then what is the multiples? Yep, so you get a couple of patterns. So this one is a paper pattern. So I don't know how well you can tell. This is a mylar pattern. So if you're not familiar with mylar, it's a real traditional uh, material for making patterns on because it's waterproof. It's a little thicker. So you will actually cut your, this is the, the mylar one is why you're going to cut the shapes out of, and that's why you're going to use to cut out your glass, right? Whether you glue them to the glass or trace around the glass, you'll use the mylar one for that. The paper pattern, and yeah, Val's showing you this one. So what's really nice about the paper pattern, it's really intended to be used for doing something like this where it gives you an opportunity to do a color study beforehand. And I can tell you that it's really helpful to, uh, you know, usually I make multiple copies and then I, you know, do lots of, you know, different colorings, right? So if you're not really quite sure, you know, where you want to put a green or a pink, in my case, I'm, this is a, um, the one I'm working on is a 12 inch apple blossom, it's called. And, and I can tell you all of the patterns for the most part, they're open for interpretation. You know, so when you're looking at them, sometimes you'll look at a piece and you're like, you're not sure if that's background, a leaf, mm -hmm. or a petal of a flower. Well, and I can tell you, it doesn't really matter. And so. there's so many pieces that having this colored in some regard helps helps you know where you're going with your colors. Because just yes. without this, and you're just picking and doing one piece at a time, you'll get mixed up with what colors are going. So that, it really, this does really help. Yes, and then a lot of times the patterns, I know they're probably difficult to see, but they're coded with a letter that tells you if it's a flower, if it's background, if it's a leaf. Um, you can see, like, if we go close in here, right, so there's 114F. Um, the arrows, if you can see these tiny little arrows on there, they're supposed to help you with direction of glass. And I'm going to talk about glass in a, in a couple minutes here, but 
but it just it'll just yeah, help yeah, you a lot of times when mm -hmm. you're um, you know when you're cutting out the pieces and it, get, it can get confusing when you're cutting out I think this lamp that I'm doing is 426 pieces or something right and this one is 267 the the 14 inch dragonfly and, and if you're not familiar with Odyssey uh, if you go to our website and take a look I mean, we have lots of variety there and there's some of them are pretty good size there's a you know all the way up to 22 inch or 24 inch I think so uh, just depending on what you want lots of different styles usually they tend to be nature based um, uh, which was a Victorian you know era kind of popular thing uh, that's why the dragonflies uh, there's lots of dragonfly lamps you might see but usually a variety of different flowers again I'm doing the apple blossom yeah there's a lot of them uh, and they vary a lot in number of pieces too yeah <laughs> yeah the, the wisteria is like over a thousand pieces oh, under your 1100 God. maybe or something crazy but you know here my, my personal um, opinion in philosophy about doing lamps is um, try not to do them in any kind of a rush right I mean they really are supposed to be enjoy the process is how I kind of look at it and I just work on my lamp when I when I have the time to do it and in fact what prompted us to think about doing this um, particular presentation today was uh, I mean yesterday was four degrees here in Michigan and uh, I mean and what a great time right to work on a, a well, extensive stained glass project is during the winter so we always think of lamps you know it's a you know a good time to to work on this because you're going to be indoors probably more than likely, right? In place of a big jigsaw puzzle like yeah. we, or oh, yeah. something like yeah. that. Yeah, because it's a lot like a jigsaw puzzle, right? But a little more uh, uh, involved. Involved, that's, mm -hmm. that's for sure. So we, I wanted to talk about glass a little bit. So I grabbed a couple of different brands of glass um, to show you the types of glass that, that people use in these types of Tiffany-style lamps. Um, sometimes they refer to the glass as Tiffany reproduction um, uh, glass. Uh, the first one that we have is just sitting here on the light table. Oh, yeah, so we have these really nice uh, light tables. If you've seen these before, our light pads, they are um, so thin, which is what I really like. And so they're super light, so you can like take them anywhere. And uh, what a uh, really nice size they are, too. So great to work on. I think Val's going to show you how easy they are to turn on. You can actually adjust them by holding onto the button. You can control the the brightness of it. So it does get, you know, pretty bright. So mm -hmm. and you can get, you know, dimmer just depending on where you're at. But if we set the glass on there, um, you can see the... Uh, okay, let's see the difference. <clears throat> yeah, Put that so on first, and then... So it does light up a lot of the areas that you normally maybe wouldn't see because there isn't light behind it. Yes. You do want to simula simulate, right? What When this is on, you know, it, it'll show differently than when this is not backlit. So yeah. when you choose your pieces, it's nice to have it lit so you know what you're getting sure I mean the challenge is always you know trying to pick out glass that's gonna look good lit up because the entire time you're sort of working on the shade you, you don't really see it lit up sometimes I'll take a just like a, a lamp base with just a light bulb on it and put it under here and you get a little light coming through but it's still really not gonna tell you what it's gonna exactly look like so if you're doing lamps uh, it is really best to work on a, a light uh, pad or a light box if you have that, that option so this particular uh, uh, piece of glass is made by a company, Yakagani, they're based out of Pennsylvania. Um, and uh, they make a lot of, again, what we would call Tiffany reproduction glass, meaning the types of glass that Tiffany Studios use. Uh, this particular one's called a stipple. Uh, one of the really nice things about them is, I think you can just probably see, is you get a nice variety of value, you know, light or dark, and then um, also slightly different shades of green in just this one piece. So um, there's a couple of ways, so if we're trying to pick out our glass, like for our project, there's a couple of ways of doing it. Yeah, one thing that, that I like doing is cutting the, um, this is a piece I cut out of the Mylar pattern piece, right? And then I'm gonna lay it on there and, um, and then can, find the, the yeah. perfect spot that I want and then trace around it and cut it. So if you want two-tone, you know, you can, I can slide it and have this end being the darker green and then it sh it's, shifts to the lighter and then almost to real pale out there, which is kind of the nice thing about the light box too, yes. right? Yep. So you have the actual piece and now you can just move it around. If you want it all to be really dark green, you can find that section and draw around it. And yeah, one it of the, the things that I was, uh, had an opportunity to see some actual Tiffany lamps and one of the lessons I learned from just looking at the lamps was that they often, that the shade was not uh, exactly the same all 360 degrees like this particular um, apple blossom has three repeats and it's surprising that sometimes the repeats are not the same and, and part of my thinking was you know if you put this on a lamp or you know, on, a, on a table somewhere and there's always one side that's facing a wall so uh, 
you know, if you rotate it around and now you got a slightly different look. I, I was doing something similar with this. I don't know how well it shows up, but I had these, like these blossoms are a little bit lighter, right? Most of the blossoms I'm doing are, are lighter in color, but I came around on this backside and decided to make these a little deeper pink just for the fun of it. Um, hopefully it'll right. look okay when oh, I, yeah. whenever I, I get it done well, and light mm -hmm. it up. But. When you get that done. Yeah, whenever. whenever are, you gonna, are you gonna show that next week? <laughs> for our yeah. next yeah, week. Yeah, come back weeks. tomorrow. Two then. weeks we're gonna yeah. show it. No, we're not. So you're going to show them another way, though, of cutting out the pieces. So you can do it by, you know, cutting out each individual little um, shape, yeah, or you can just work off the pattern. Right. So, well, we don't have, well, yeah, so this sheet, you took a, the other one and cut out all these little pieces. I cut pieces. all the mylar off. Oh, yes, yeah, all so. the little pieces. So that's one way of doing it. And, you know, that's a lot of work. So, but if you didn't cut them all out, you can, this is the other nice thing about the light box. It's amazing because you can actually put your pattern down and then put your glass on top and then you can do the same thing. I could slide this around if this is the piece I want and just trace it through the through the glass and cut it without having to go to the extra step of cutting out all the pieces. But then that requires you having to actually get transparent enough glass that you can do that with. Because there are some that it would not work very well. Probably the pink over there you've got, we don't put that on here. I don't There's know that, yeah, oh, that that's. Well, this, these two, yeah, this, it is. this pink and then the green are a type of glass that Yakagini refers to as stipple is the term. See, that pretty and they tend to be a little more transparent um, or right. translucent might be a better way of putting that, right? And uh, the point is that they light up really well, um, uh, you know, in a, in a lamp situation. Mm -hmm. So the other thing I want to say about the pattern real quick was if you're a regular stained glass person, you know, we work off the pattern a lot of times after we've cut the pieces, but when you're doing a lamp, we, once we've cut the pieces, we don't um, fit them to the pattern, to the flat pattern. We fit them to the lamp. So after I've cut these, I don't know how well you can see, but most of these I haven't done any grinding on yet because I, because you, the, ideally you would cut all of them out first and then, then you start grinding them afterwards because you you might find you don't have to grind some as many as you think. And then all you're gonna do is grind one piece to fit the next piece. And at this point, the, the pattern on the mold is really just for reference. I mean, it kind of gives you an idea of where things should go, but you're, I'm not trying to match right. my piece to the pattern on the mold. You're not hung up on the fact nope. that it's not identically yeah. the same shape. Because it so will as long be. as they, right, as long as, plus you'll have foil, that'll take up a little yeah. space, yeah, and yeah, so, we, yeah. Yeah, it's not unusual actually to have to, after foiling, to take a piece off that you foiled and, and re-grind it. You know, I've had to do that before. So um, sometimes the fitting can be, you know, a little uh, nitpicky in that regard. But, uh, it, you know, they're not going to fit perfect, right? Because the glass is flat and the mold is curved. So mm -hmm. oh, keep that in mind all the time. Um, uh, let me, let's uh, look at some of the other glasses real quick, just for the fun of it. Okay. Right. Do I, you want to look at them on the light box? Yeah, let's look at them on the light box. I think they okay, look let's. a lot like more interesting. I can hand me and I'll try to All right, hopefully you'll be okay. Cut the, Get cut during cut this whole you. process, right? So um, you can see it your way. Mm -hmm. on this particular one, uh, I'll flip it over for a second because maybe it'll show a little bit better. I grabbed this one because of how textured it is. And uh, again, probably, I didn't use one this textured in my glass, in my lamp, but I've used some that had a little more texture to them. Sometimes the texture is kind of fun. You often see this in the dogwood style mm -hmm. um, lamps. Uh, with this kind of really ripple texture, but you can see how well it lights up. And again, look at the, the variation in value in the pink. So you can pick out areas that are in, sh in shadow, areas where the light's hitting it. That's sort of the thinking, you know, with these types of glasses is, you know, we want to try to make the lamp look as realistic as possible, right? Like we're looking at, like mm -hmm. we're looking at apple blossoms outside on a sunny day or something. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we want, you know, some areas to be in shadow, some areas to look like it has light hitting it. This is a little tricky to see through. Yeah, this one. So, well, I was going to ask you. So, cutting on this side is going to be a little tricky, right? Yeah. So, yeah, would you suggest inverting your piece and? Yep, exactly. Yeah, good point, right? So, if we wanted the texture to show out on the lamp, I mean, as Val was pointing out, we're not going to cut this, this ripple side. This is a pretty side. deep ripple. This I mean, maybe if you had a saw, you might do it with yeah. saw, right? But if you're doing it by hand, you wouldn't. So, we would flip over and then cut it on the pick smooth your, side. But yeah, then, pick your. Pick your spot on this side, right, so that you yep. have exactly where you want. Then 
flip it over. Yeah, we'll move the pattern in. Okay. And then you can still remember where your spot yeah, where is. Yeah, my finger is. And then you would take your piece and then flip it over, right? So that we're looking, so we're doing a reverse of that and then and then drawing that. Yeah, so then when we put it, yeah, then we cut it and then when we put it over there, we yeah. would put the rippled side up and it would yeah. fit. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's the way we're going to do that. Yeah. So, but that is probably the best way to handle this really deep ripple. Yeah, in fact, let, oh, I grabbed one. Here's another textured glass that is um, a, what they call a granite texture. So you can probably, I don't know how well you can see it, mm -hmm. but one of the things that the texture does is kind of break up the color a little bit. So if you see, especially this area here where it, it is a streaky glass, but the streakiness is kind of broken up because of the, the granite texture, which again, it's just a matter of preference really. Um, you know what kind of style you like, mm -hmm. but again, you can see a nice variety of greens in that one piece. So. Well, that is one of the benefits of, of the art glass or of the Tiffany style is that you get a whole lot of options just from one piece, and that's the nice part. Oh, and there we have the model. Yeah, and I grabbed a couple of modeled ones. Uh, if you're not familiar with the with the term modeled, is this uh, kind of uh, design that's kind of created on the surface of the glass or in the glass. And uh, also quite popular, you know, for doing Tiffany style uh, lampshades. Uh, what it uh, gives you a lot of times is sometimes different colors. Or again, as I mentioned earlier, if you're trying to do something that looks like it's uh, sun dappled, you know, kind mm -hmm. of like where the sun's hitting leaves and, and coming through some and bouncing off others, you can see that. I know sometimes people look at it and they, and they think it's too busy or there's too much going on. But if you narrow your focus, like right to where you're just, I know it's hard to see probably, but if you're just narrowing your focus to just one little spot, you know, you can see where maybe you, where this look, might look like a leaf where the sun's hitting that part, but that part's in the shade. Um, it creates a little more dimension. The lamps tend to not look as flat or sometimes we say cartoony, right? Like a coloring book, single color kind of stuff, right? Yeah, I like flat. Yeah, flat. They don't want to, we don't want to go flat. No, no, no. And then here's another one that, that I got. This is another modeled one, I think. But this one I wanted to just point out that a lot of times you'll find, yeah, you'll find color or glass that has like uh, different colors in it. And you might think, well, why would I want green and red in the same piece, right? Unless I was doing some Christmas thing. But if you're doing like poppies, for example, you know, you might pick some of the reds here. But then the green leaves you could pick from here and you'll have a little red in them. And it is a... The term is called um, color cross contamination. And what it means is just, you know, if you're out in nature, if you're looking at stuff, I mean, color kind of bounces off and reflects on the next object, right? So sometimes, you know, a red rose, the red part might um, reflect onto the green leaves. And so you see that a little bit. And naturally, we just see it and don't even think much of it. But to make your, again, your lamps look a little more natural, people will do this uh, cross contamination where you know, you'll pick a, some green that's got a little red in it, and then you pick a, lot, a piece that's got a lot of red, but maybe a little green in it. It just kind of helps balance out the color. You don't need to do it for every single piece in no. the lamp, but, but you know, just here or there. Touches just here and there. Yeah, kind of gives a nice kind of a balance to it. Um, I'm going to show you a couple more. I guess I grabbed a whole lot of glass today for some reason. Uh, here's some bullseye glasses that are kind of fun. Um, again, the bullseye makes. I know. Oh, what, I wasn't that close. What's that? So I, a lot of times we're familiar with Bullseye, uh, at, they're known as a glass fusing company, right? They make glass for fusing, but, but here's a couple of glasses. Well, that, here's a glass that, that is not intended for fusing at all. These actually are their fusible glasses. This, oh no, neither one of these is their fusible glasses. Both of these are actually made just for stained glass. Um, they make these model glasses because they had a lot of requests from um, people that were making lamps. And uh, so they came back, but this one I think is a, a real fun right here. Daffodils. A, yeah, daffodils mm -hmm. or laburnum, and I know that yeah. you said in that one a lot of times. And so you can see again this variation in color. Um, same thing with this one's also modeled in spots. You know, the the pink is. Here is a fusible bullseye glass that um, is. Uh, it's green. Yeah, it's green. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> nice. It's got lots one of, of colors. The, yeah, one of the really nice things about this is, again, this if way. you're just trying to get some different. Um, values or shades of green you'll see there's a little brown in there uh, which sometimes it acts more like a shadow uh, so if you have some areas that you're trying to, to it to make bright colors look brighter sometimes it helps to have some dark areas in the lamp really so uh, to kind of play off of right so you have something in contrast so even the fusible glasses work real well i, I got this one last one i'll show you just because um, this is a glass that yakagini makes 
that is, uh, I was thinking of the dragonfly when I grabbed this one. So you see this as a back, background a lot of times in the dragonfly. Uh, right, looks real watery, or one, mm -hmm. of the, one of the water lily ones. The, um, this is a granite that is, was originally made by a company, a glass company called Euroboros. And uh, Yakagini is um, making a bunch of the old Euroboros uh, formulas and uh, making them in stained glass, right? So, which is really um, nice to have those back, um, the colors, the styles that Euroboros used to make. The, uh, well, you know, if you have questions, obviously, you know, reach out to us. Uh, you can message us below or always uh, catch us on uh, Facebook at DelphiGlass.com or Instagram, Instagram email, Facebook or. at DelphiGlass.com. Uh, we'll answer any and all questions. Yeah, yeah I was just going to uh, think, just talk a little bit more about the construction. And I think Before you go on there, Roy, we've got a question. Um, what's the code for that glass? I think the your boards we were just looking at, what's the item number? That's a great question, and uh, well, this particular one is uh, Y6548. Um, if you're familiar with Euroboros, that, that is actually Euroboros' number, 6548 for the glass. The Y just, we put a Y on them uh, here at Delphi, so we, we know the manufacturer, that's what that means is the, for uh, Yaki Oh, one other thing I wanted to point out real quick was, it really helps to kind of organize, you know, when you're doing a uh, lamp that's got so many pieces in it, um, I, when, after I cut out the pieces, I put them in envelopes and label them, you know, flowers, uh, whether it leaves and stems, right? So then I know where they're at all the time. And then after I uh, take one out, um, where's that one piece? Was it? The pattern piece to the, uh, mm -hmm. probably. Oh. oh, anyways. So a lot of times, you know, as I was mentioning, like, for example, my apple blossom has three repeats. So I often, you know, when I'm cutting out a piece, like I have another little sample here, anyway. So when I'm cutting this piece out, I cut all three at one time, right? That's a time saver. I mean, I'm still pretty picky about you know what part of the sheet I'm going to grab that from, but it is, um, but it's quicker than just you know trying to cut, you know, trying to cut one whole repeat and then go cut the second whole repeat and then cut the third one, right? Mm -hmm. So cut all three pieces at the same time. You'll save yourself well, a little bit of time. I actually even have an envelope that I, I can't read it, but I wrote done on it. That just tells me that all the pieces in here I've already cut them all out, so I don't have to would accidentally yeah, recut something, which I'm pretty sure I've, I've cut some pieces multiple times, more than three times. Um, so if you can see, I have all the glass stuck to the mold. And so what we, um, traditionally what we would use is something called tacky wax. Um, how it's traditionally done is you would melt this in like a double boiler and then paint the wax onto the mold and it's, it's sticky. And then I would just stick the glass to it. Uh, I know for me personally, um, I find that uh, sometimes it's a little messier in the long run, especially if you're not working on it on a you know, weekly basis kind of a thing. Uh, you know, you get cat hair on it and all kinds of stuff actually starts yeah. sticking to it. So I, what I end up doing is I just actually pinch off some of the wax and roll it up into a little ball and then stick the pieces on. Uh, and then, then the other advantage to that is, as I mentioned earlier, the glass is flat, but the mold is curved. So I can actually, you know, in fact, almost all these pieces have two little balls of wax, so I can tip them to fit the mold better, or actually, to be honest, to fit the next piece of glass better, right? Because I don't want one uh, much higher than the other, so you can uh, just stick it on there. And then as I go, I peel, I take them off, and then I grind them. Oh, I didn't mention much about getting the dark lines on the mold. So the traditional way of getting the dark lines on the mold is you would take some unsanded grout, um, add some water to it, just a little bit, add a little bit of Elmer's glue to it so it's kind of sticky and gummy, and then you wipe it over the whole mold, and so then let that from. dry. So you wipe it over this whole mold, let that dry, and then just come in with a damp sponge and, and wipe off the mold, and since all the lines are recessed, the dark you know, color just stays inside the recessed area and you just wipe it off. Um, I actually, on this one, just used a Sharpie. I don't know if you have these really, you've seen these ones with the really ultra-fine tip on them. Um, and I just went in and just traced it. I know it's a little more, t I don't know which one's more time consuming. One's certainly messier, but um, I guess it just depends. And I just trace the lines so I can sort of see where they're at. In fact, uh, to be honest, often I don't even, I just work on them the way they are. I, I don't usually even take So you don't necessarily have to do that. No. It just makes the pieces yeah. easier to see. Yeah, I think that's it. It just sees the mold a little bit easier to see. Uh, so the next step then would be foiling this and then soldering it, with, no, which is obviously not something we're going to do today. I mean, we want more help with that and we have some videos out already you can always go to our um, YouTube channel or our video section on, on Facebook and then you can look up we've done um, foiling and soldering so yes. so but, we need to 
the top. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, good, good one. That, that's why yeah, I was here. So the other thing about these Odyssey lamps is they have a really um, unique system for attaching them to a lamp base. And so what we're going to use is this uh, ring wheel and cap system. So the wheel, I mean the ring goes first. Goes in here. Yeah, okay. see how the setup is here? So here's the, uh, this is how this really works. So the ring goes there. And so then when we cut these pieces out here, we will solder them to the ring. And um, then the ring, then the wheel uh, will attach to the top part of the lamp base, right? And then the, the lampshade will sit on top like that. So the wheel is actually um, holding all the weight of the, the lampshade because they can get heavy, you can imagine, right? With all that glass, all that solder. Mm -hmm. The cap then is just decorative. If you've done lamps before, a lot of times we solder the cap to the glass, to right? The opening, yeah. And then that's how you would hang your piece, but this is done differently. So this, the cap at this point just covers this and just becomes decorative. Um, so it's not really doing any other function than that. You know, we would uh, solder this and patina it, you know, to match what we were doing. But so you can see if you, on my setup here, uh, this one requires a four inch ring. So I would solder. Oh, my other bit of advice to you here is too, when you're cutting, see this one has a little border here. Uh, save that for last and cut them bigger than you think or taller than you think. Uh, because again, same deal, we're gonna match the glass to the ring. I mean, I don't care if it matches the pattern or matches the mold, it really needs to come to the ring. And so we wanna make sure that you, know, you don't wanna waste your time cutting a bunch of glass that's gonna end up probably being too small. Uh, so then that will get soldered. And again, once that's soldered, this whole shade would then just sit on here um, you can see that this is threaded, the wheel's threaded, and that would just go on to the lampshade, you know, and it has two different size holes depending on what size, you know, the... So, it, I'm not sure if, right, if um, it's clear. Yeah, if I'm following it, but, so this is in the... Oh, you gotta get the ring up. I don't know. Yeah. So that goes there, right? Yes. So then, goes. basically, doesn't this thing come up from underneath? Yes. Okay, well, that's what I'm not sure people realize. Is that it? Exactly, yeah, like if this was all done, right, if I had yeah. soldered to this, right, this whole thing would sit on the wheel, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then the, the and cap the, has that screw that would go down in, and that's what holds yep. those three pieces together. And the same deal, the cap is just decorative. It really is just there to, to give a nice finish look to the top. So we're not soldering to the cap, is my point. Yeah. Does that... Um, yeah, but that's a unique system. I mean, that's just for yes. Odyssey, right? What? You've also mentioned you could use uh, a wood form. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, I know. Kelly and I were talking about this a, a, a while ago. But originally, Tiffany Studios used wood forms. You know, uh, just because again they're durable. Uh, you can, you know, if you have a lathe, right? You can just kind of work it out. And uh, uh, I know people have done it with styrofoam too. I mean, you can take um, styrofoam blocks, glue them together, and carve it. You know, into a shape. It doesn't have to be as perfectly smooth as these are. Um, because as I mentioned before, I mean the glass isn't going to really fit on the mold anyways, right? I mean, uh, their their glass is flat, your mold's curved, so you know you can certainly make your own. Again, this um, Tiffany book here by Hugh Archer talks exactly about sort of that thing about how to make your own, how to make your own pattern even. Um, so it's pretty nice uh, if you don't want to buy this system, for example. Let your really imagination know. go. Yes. So good. Well, we have the filigree. I don't know if you want to talk oh, yeah, about show you, yeah, Before you move on quick. to filigree, Tom's got a quick question. Yes. The cap is always loose then. So let's show the bottom um, of the cap. Well, not actually. So in this situation, you see this little, it's threaded, right? And so what this is going to do is, and I don't know, well, well, you can see, but there's a small little reducer inside that. So when this goes on, it actually screws into uh, that. And then so that is not loose at all. Mm -hmm. um, this little two-inch one... I think uh, it does the same thing, except I grabbed this out of the... Oh, it's just missing it. Yeah, I grabbed it out of the warehouse, and it was missing the little threaded part. Um, but there should be a threaded this part. This little threaded part, but it, it, otherwise it does the exact same thing. Um, there's a spot for it to, to go in a little wheel, and we would just thread it, right? You know, that would just screw in there, even though this yeah. one's missing the piece. But So basically, you know, in the, the ring and wheel and cap, there the only thing that's actually soldered to the lamp is the ring yes but they're all secure to each other and then the other two yeah. one comes up from the bottom the other one goes on the top and then that that central screw is what holds them all together that's always the part that always confused me yes <laughs> yeah and this what you, okay, you i was just going to say the filigree so uh there's a, a variety of different dragonfly lamps this happens to be the smallest one at 14 inches but 
they, they're uh, also available to purchase are these filigree. Um, a lot of the Tiffany style lamps had some kind of filigree on them. I know one of the poppies does. And, mm -hmm. um, uh, so and then there's a, for whatever how many repeats that you have on your lamp, that's how many pieces are in here. So and then they just get you know they're an overlay yeah. that go over the glass. So once you cut the glass, you would put this over there and then solder them on. So would you foil that then with your glass so it's like sandwiches them together? Oh no, this is uh, up on the surface, right? Yeah. So you, I mean, you foil your glass and then you would put this on top and then you just solder around that mm -hmm. edge, you know, to kind of hold that in place. And sometimes I've seen them that they're just like tack solder. They're not mm -hmm. even like, there's no real reason to put a big full bead of solder on there um, when you're just attaching this to the surface. So it's usually one of the last things that you would do once you've got almost everything done. Um, you're just almost to the cleaning stage, then you would kind of tack all these, tack solder all those back on. Okay, well, I think that's probably it, right? So that was good. Well, yeah. thanks. Well, thanks for joining us today. I uh, hope you found this sort of interesting. If you have questions, if you think about something afterwards, again, just feel free to reach out to us. Uh, there's uh, many ways to do that, and we'll be happy to um, uh, get back with you. If you want to know more about the lamp, uh, you know, it's possible we could do something down the, down the road, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit more about the con actual construction about it. Yeah. Um, or sure. different tile, style lamps, we can talk about show that, how so. to work on it. Maybe That's right, everybody wants to come over to my house, watch me work on it. <laughs> yes, that would be just riveting. All right. Okay. All right. Well, thanks. Yeah, see, see ya.